So the last question, which had to have this separate video because numbers 10 and 11 were too long to put together. So this time, question 11, which again takes up a whole page. So we need to scroll through it carefully then to do both parts before I go over it. Pause here. And pause here. Number 11, the last question. Quite a long question. <coughs> Two touching circles resting against the axis. It says, the line joining the centres is inclined at an angle of P radians. And what's the first part we've got to do now? Show that OB is equal to 1 plus 2 sine P. Well, OB would be, it'd be this equal to the radius of that first circle, and the radius is just one unit, plus this distance, which is just the distance across this little joining triangle, which is one of the first things you would do anyway. You'd form this joining triangle, which isn't necessarily a tangent there, that's just the way I happen to have drawn it. And it says this angle is P, this angle is P, so I've got an angle of P radians there, and you want this distance X, and I want this distance Y for the second bit. <coughs> so it's fairly simple after that then, isn't it? So for OB, <coughs> OB would be one unit, that's going across to the centre of that circle, plus the distance X. Right angle in there, again that's not meant to be a tangent, that was just coincidental. So I've got 1 plus x, 1 plus, <coughs> now, x over this distance, which again is 1 unit and 1 unit, which will be 2 units, x over that makes the sine of it. So x will be equal to 2 sine p. That sort of begs the question here, doesn't it? That's just as if I copied it down. So maybe I should write it down at the side here. x over 2 equals the sine of p, which means x equals 2 sine p. Then I can put it in. So 1 plus 2 sine p. That's the first bit. 2. So for the second bit it says, write down a similar expression for OC. Well, for OC, again, to reach OC, I would go up to the centre of that, which is 1 unit, since the radius is 1, and then I'd have to travel up that distance y in that triangle. So OC is going to be 1 plus y. So that's going to be 1 plus, I'll just do over here, y over the 2, because that line is the radius plus the radius, unit radius 2, y over 2, for the cosine of the angle P. So y is going to be 2 cos P. So 2 cos P. So that's that part. And then it says, hence show that D, where D I presume is the distance, the length of BC, Show that D, the length of BC, is equal to this expression. Right, well, BC is just going to be that right angle triangle. So we've got B, ooh, C squared would be OB squared plus OC squared. So that would be <coughs> 1 plus 2 sine P squared plus 1 plus 2 cos P squared. Now I'll just rattle through that. So, there we go, square in this bracket then. So it's going to be square the first one, twice the product, 4 sine p, square the last, 4 sine square p. Same again, square the first one, twice the product, 4 cos p, square the last, 4 cos square p. Now, gathering it up, there's 1 and 1 makes 2. Now, there's 4 of lots of things, but putting the sine squared p and the cos squared p together will be useful. But the other ones, even though they've got 4s, they're wanting them separate in the answer. So leaving that as 4 cos p plus 4 sine p. Well, sine squared and cos squared equals 1. So that's just going to be 2 plus 4 which is 6 plus 4 cos p plus oops, 4 sine p is equal to, and it says, work out d, which is equal to that, which is d squared. Right, part b, 1. Express d squared, which I've rewritten here, in the form of 6 plus k cos p minus alpha. Right, well that's just the wave function again, isn't it, apart from having that additional 6. So that 6 is just a constant, it's going to sit at the side, so I'll expand that, and that'll be k times cos p cos alpha plus, oops, sine p sine alpha. I'll expand that out, so 6 plus k cos alpha, extracting and emphasising the coefficients of cos p, plus k sine alpha of sine p, equating the coefficients. 
k cos alpha is the coefficient of cos p, the coefficient of cos p is 4, so k cos alpha is 4. k sine alpha is the coefficient of sine, the coefficient of sine is 4, so that's also 4. So I've got these two simultaneous equations, standard techniques for that, do this over here. If you square them and add them, the cosses and sines will disappear, but that same process, cos squared cos sine squared makes 1, leaving you k squared is 4 squared plus 4 squared. I could have done that quicker just by thinking of the root 2 relationship between a 1 1 root 2 triangle still. So that's going to be oh, 16 and 16 is 32. So k is going to be root 32. It's just a pasting you know, of this way, isn't it? Which turns out it's 4 root 2, which I knew all along. I could jump straight to that. I'm going to do that in the next bit. And doing, well, what can I put it? 2 divided by 1 is going to give me tan alpha equals 1. And it's in the first quadrant, we know that anyway, they're all positive. Which means that alpha is going to be the inverse tan of 1, which is pi upon 4. So I can re now rewrite it. So d squared is going to be 6 plus 4 root 2 cos p minus pi upon 4. That was the second bit then. Part 2 simply says, what's the exact maximum value of this well you don't have to differentiate because that's just a, a, a trigonometrical curve and with trigonometrical curves you know where the tops and the bottoms are they go up and down by their amplitude unless of course they've been shifted as well and then they'll go up and down by their amplitude over the vertical shift so the highest this will get to is six plus four root two so when we finish here what's the maximum value the maximum will be six plus four root two and that will happen when the cosine would normally reach the top. That would happen when its angle is zero. The six power two, and that happens when p minus pi upon four equals zero. In other words, when p equals pi upon four. So that's the answer to part b. Maximum value is six plus four root two when p equals pi upon four. Part c, one, show that OB, the length of OB in the special case when you've sorted that out, so it's pi upon 4, so everything's at 45 degrees, so that will also be a 45 degree triangle. All right, pi upon 4. <coughs> now, 45 degree triangles, you don't need to mess about with Pythagoras and so on when you've got a 45 degree triangle. The simple ratio of the sides in an isosceles, rather, 45 degree triangle, is 1, 1 root 2, which means if you know the length of one of the short sides, this side would be root 2 times it. Or if you know the length of the long side, the short side will be the long side divided by root 2. Right, so using that principle, which is what you could have done when you were finding that k, because you had a 4 and a 4, obviously two short sides, 4, 4, 4 root 2. Anyway, so the OB is that. Well, you already had the OB from the first part was 1 plus 2 sine p. But it's the case where sine is pi upon 4. So you've got 1 plus 2. 2 times, and sine pi upon 4 is 1 upon root 2, so you've got 1 plus 2 over root 2, and 2 divided by root 2, that takes up one of the roots, so you've got 1 plus root 2. So OB equals 1 plus root 2. That was for part 1. We'll find the exact length of BD. Oh, sorry, I didn't mark that in. BD. Well, BD. Again, <coughs> BD is a right angle, isosceles right angle triangle because that's 45 degrees there. <coughs> 45 degrees, 45 degrees because of the right angle. BD is the biggest side. So BD would be using the ratio. If that's the biggest side, the two short sides will be the big side divided by root 2. So BD will be 1 plus root 2 divided by root 2. So root 2 into root 2 goes 1. So it's 1 plus 1 over root 2. Or, if you will, 1 plus, just rationalise the denominator, multiply the top bound by root 2, 1 plus a root 2 over 2, if you like, whichever. So that's that part. And then it says, for the last bit, using your answer to be part 2, part before, write down the exact value of this, uh -huh, because that's what you had, you had the maximum value of d squared was 6 plus 4 root 2, just using the cosine shifted up 6, then another 4 root 2 for the amplitude, which means that 
d would be the square root of 6 plus 4 root 2. There's a messy little thing, square roots of expressions with square roots. And you don't know how to expand the bracket with square roots. But there's another way, because d was this distance here. Well, that distance there is quite easy to find. I know the distance OB is 1 plus root 2. Which means that, if that distance is that, that means that the distance BC, which equals D, <coughs> will be root 2 times 1 plus root 2, just from that triangle, which gives me root 2 plus 2, or 2 plus root 2. Oh, I've got to that one red. Simple as that. Or you could have done it from, you've already worked out BD in the first part. Once you know what BD is, then BC is obviously going to be double that. So doubling that, double 2, 1 gives 2, double a half of root 2 gives you root 2. Either way, but use this little triangle. So much simpler than trying Pythagoras. Or, maybe we should just put it explicitly, the square root of 6 plus 4 root 2 equals that. Just to make it quite clear. New finish.